Hey, it's Corlin Sutton, wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. It's football time again. Hey, hey, already. Why does it feel like Thursday Night Football surprised you? It surprised me, that's for sure. We sat down here. I know we're covering the Bengals Browns, and I w- but but it didn't dawn on me until well after that knowledge that oh, that's it's this today. E- that's this evening. Yeah, everything is everything, my friend. <laughs> every day is every day. Set your lineups. <laughs> We've got a jam packed episode of the podcast today. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the fantasy footballers back with you. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. You can follow Mike at FF Hitman. Oh yeah. You can follow, you can follow Jason at Jason FFL. You sure can. What on earth is happening? <laughs> you can follow me at Andy Holloway. You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm glad you get on, got in on that, Andy. <laughs> YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Subscribe. Click the bell. You can find oh, out man. when we go live, which is uh, quite frequently, especially on Sunday morning, because Mike is live answering questions. Last minute questions. He gets to sit here and teeter totter between whether a player is going to, uh, like Mike Evans is going to perform with an injury or not. Yeah, you ever seen a grown man tilt in real time? <laughs> Tune in Sunday morning. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> click the bell. Uh, what was your, uh, out of curiosity, what was your Mike Evans take on s- uh, Sunday morning? Full bench. Full bench. Yeah. So you nailed it. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, he, I mean that he, touchdown. Yeah, he, he got a touchdown, so you kind of got bailed out a little bit. But, yeah, he was – he was a full bench for me. That's as bad a game as you can have with a touchdown. I mean, I guess technically you could have had one yard, but a two-yard touchdown <laughs> is literally the worst game you can have uh, while, true. while hitting that pay dirt. We've got some news to cover on the show today to help you with your fantasy lineups this week. We've got the first half of the fantasy forecast. We're getting into the matchups today. We have our starts of the week. we got the boom, boom kicker, and we've got... The quick question today, which is our taking it to 100 player. Taking it up to 100. Presented by Head & Shoulders. Available at Walmart. All right. Excuse me. Let me begin again. You've been excused. We've got our taking it up to 100 segment on the show today. Last week's picks, well, Boston Scott got hurt. Antonio Gibson, that was a miss. Didn't take it to 100. It was, but it, and I reminded you guys of this yesterday because I was also reminded of it, lost in all of the shuffle. There was a Gibson run where he cut to the outside and you went, holy crap, there's the Gibson speed, and he ended up tripping over Terry McLaurin's legs so on, you're my on guy. a block on the outside. And had Gibson cleared that one block, he would have. This would have been like a sixty-yard touchdown. So, like I said, was Gibson your fantasy MVP? He was. So your my guy tripped your fantasy yes, MVP it, it, it to was, just completely ruin the play. It was a full sabotage, clearly aimed at one person and one person alone. I I think it'll take a little bit more than a, a couple weeks for Gibson to get yeah, going. Yeah, to get going. Um, that's fair. Jonathan Taylor was Jason's pick, and he took it to. He took it to 100. That's a uh, hit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, you he, predicted the Marlon Mack Achilles injury. 100%. I mean, I said there's no way that he doesn't go down to season-ending injury. That was what I said. Don't go back and listen. Um, <laughs> but six of six receptions. Joe has been scrubbed. <laughs> yes. Involvement in the passing game. And now, obviously, the future that look will look bright. We will talk about him later on. So in this segment, we try to pick a player that either had a down week the week before or someone who's ranked outside the kind of – starting group uh in terms of you know the consensus my taking it up to 100 player for week number two is scotty miller wide receiver I like for the it. tampa bay buccaneers gets the opportunity to take on carolina had a very nice debut he is a perfect tom brady wide receiver and there is a high likelihood that chris godwin misses this week we saw the play with the concussion at the end of last week. Didn't hear much about it. Until the it, NFL apparently did not see it. Did he not come out? 
No. Oh, my. Yeah, it was pretty clear to me that something bad had happened to his head. Well, you had the double. You had the, the hit on the field and then the hit on the yeah. field itself. Yes, and so Scotty Miller, five catches last week. I think he has a big week against Carolina. I think Tampa Bay gets it fixed this week. So um, I think you can start him. He'll be great in PPR. He has a shot at a touchdown with Brady this week if Godwin's out. Uh, so I'm, I think Scotty Miller taking it to 100. Uh, my pick for taking it to 100 this week is a guy that people drafted to be the star, the hopeful that he's the number one on their team. And people were, I mean, surprising to me, disappointed in the performance of Deontay Johnson week one. When I watched the game, Bewildering I was, to me. I, I, I don't understand saying, it. I was saying this, uh, this looks good. And if you want the data to back that up, he had 10 targets. If you look at the target market share of that team, Juju Smith-Schuster, who, yes, he had the big game. He had the two touchdowns. I think that is why people are down on Deontay Johnson. But he had a 19% target share. Deontay Johnson had a 32% target share. Right. He looked like the type of receiver that, you know, Antonio Brown was. That that quick in and out of breaks just uh, hit him in stride. I, I think big things are happening for Deontay Johnson uh, this season. I have not been in on Deontay until after this last game. I think he takes it to 100 in week two. And I'm going with David Montgomery, running back for the Chicago Bears. It wasn't a big fantasy day for David Montgomery this past week, the the opening weekend. But he looked pretty good, especially better than I thought coming off the yeah, injury. Like he was a concerning start. You you felt like you could put him in there because he was going to get the full workload, but you were still concerned about the groin. What's going to happen with that? But David Montgomery looked fine. He looked like he was back to an uninjured player. He had 16 opportunities in, in this game, 13 carries on the ground. And if you remember what happened, I mean, they the, the game got out of control. Like, Detroit was going to win this game easily. So the, the Bears had to go put it on the back of Trubisky, which uh, they were able to do that. But this should be a more competitive game here against the New York Giants. I don't expect David Montgomery to only see 13 carries. I think he'll see more than 15, throwing a couple targets here or there. And, and you have a player that's not currently a running back two among the consensus that I think is should easily be a running back two this week. Okay. Take your hair up to 100 with Head & Shoulders, available at Walmart. You can pick yours up today and check out next Tuesday's episode to hear how our up to 100 picks turned out. Mm-hmm. News and notes from around the league. All right, Godwin. Chris Godwin is in the league's concussion protocol. He didn't practice today or Wednesday. So because of the fact he entered the protocol so late, there's concern. Matthew Betts, our injury expert, he's concerned about his availability this week. Mike Evans was limited. Hamstring injury. More of a decoy last week until that touchdown catch. Um, Bruce Arians said that the team was careful of how many times Mike Evans ran downfield routes last week. So they are, they're beat up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, the nice thing is another week, uh, to, to heal up. And if Godwin is out, I, I think I would play Mike Evans with, with high confidence. Miles Sanders practiced in full on Wednesday. Let's go miles should return this week. Stay healthy. <laughs> Lane Johnson should return as well. Is you that the latest like you've dragon. heard? Dragon. You, that like, was a dr that was a stay out. Yeah, it was it was real sinister almost. Well, I have Miles Sanders on Go. way too way too many <laughs> leagues uh, for him to reaggravate that hamstring. So I just I'm he's got a responsibility. To, I don't need to him you. to have a huge week too. I just need him to stay stay healthy. <laughs> oh gosh, that was like Batman. <laughs> stay healthy. All right, um, we've got some more important news coming Number in from two. Adam Gaze. Frank Gore is going to be the starting running back. Oof. So that's all I've got to say about that. Against the 49ers, not great. Yeah, yeah. And then Jamison Crowder did not practice. Mike nailed this. He, <laughs> We were on the FootCast yesterday, our, our bonus episode for the Foot Clan supporters, and Mike said verbatim, he just basically said, look, he scored on this long touchdown play. It looked like he hurt his hamstring. Nobody's talking about it. He has to have heard something. Why won't anybody talk about it? And then, like, two hours later, he's on the report with a hurt hamstring. So, 
We'll see. Yeah. Jamison Crowder was a target monster last week. It's a bad matchup with a bad hamstring. I will have him on my bench. Well, is it that bad, though? I mean, like, the 49ers are hurting in the, the cornerback area. And and what, when it comes to, like, fully functioning hamstrings, I know he needs to make sharp cuts and everything, but Jameson Crowder is not the dude who's flying down the field. He, are you arguing that he doesn't need his hamstrings? I, I am arguing that he's not running a nine route every single time where he has to go at full speed. So I think it's just possible that you're still going to see plenty of target volume, but it, it is sketchy. Make sure he's actually going to play. I, I agree with that. If I'm in a full PPR, you could end up with like nine receptions for 28 yards. That's that's how I see yes, it Yes, that is in the realm of possibilities. Okay, and then uh, what else do we have about George Kittle right now? So he's not going to practice this week. They say he could still play week two. I know that we've got internal debates and, and no yeah. insider knowledge here of whether he will play. I don't think he will play. I believe the other two gentlemen lean that he will. We don't know. You have to have a backup plan. That's it. Grab a tight end off the waiver wires if you know if Dallas Goddard or one of these guys is still out there. Grab them just in case. You have to be prepared. Uh, thankfully, it is an early game on Sunday, so you'll be able to make a transaction easily. Allen Robinson is putting yesterday behind me, ready to move forward with the Bears. Okay. Um, Did he refriend them? <laughs> that's, that is the real. That's, that's the 2020 that's, question. That's real embarrassing. If he did not go the you just hide their notifications and did he went full unfriend and now he has to do the walk of shame to refriend everybody. <laughs> Allen Robinson learned how to social. So that means the Bears got the friend request. Oh, and they, they decide accept? whether do you do you wait a little bit. Well, either way, or on Twitter, they're going to see in the verified tab. Uh oh, Allen Robinson just followed <laughs> us again. <laughs> and uh, we have one insider piece of news. Ooh, and this popped up last night. This look, this is this is a fantasy footballers exclusive. Are we reporting this? You're darn right. We are reporting this. This is fair game. I had the same question, Andy, but it's too late. It's no. wait, wait, wait. If we report something like this, Mike. Oh. Breaking news. All right, this is taken. I it. can't believe we're reporting this. this of is course we are. I'm, no, it's great. We yeah. should. We should be very transparent. Look, take this for what you will. <laughs> but we are in a fantasy football league. It's uh, the Sleeper Bowl 2020. That's right. It, it, Juju Smith-Schuster is the headline guy in this. He's the headline celebrity in this uh, fantasy football league. You know, some other big names in there as well. But the key takeaway here is Juju Smith-Schuster is playing fantasy football. Jason Moore, last night, who did Juju add to his fantasy football team? Well, he dropped one of his running backs, and he picked up Benny Snell. He, <laughs> and did, he did not drop James Conner, and so do not do not yeah, insinuate yeah, that. Yeah, that did seem like maybe he dropped Conner. But he did add Benny Snell onto his bench. Yeah, when both Mike and I saw this last night, went, eyeballs Ooh. went wide. Went, oh, my goodness. I, was, I literally had to tell – as soon as that transaction went through, I started talking to my wife, who could care less. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh, this is what is happening. So, uh, who knows? It, 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 look, it's just a good transaction. We we yes. said yesterday, he probably listened to yesterday's show and was like, <laughs> waiver wires, Benny Snell's a good pickup. Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah, he, do, he took our uh, Benny Snell advice. <laughs> but he does practice there. It, yeah, it, look, it's meaningful. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. If he thought, <laughs> put it this way, if he thought James Conner was locked and loaded, he wouldn't pick up Benny Snell. That's a good way to put it. Right. So there's there's a uh, – I just want clarity. As a fantasy football player, I just want to know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, okay. Hey. Any other secret news you got for us, Mike? Uh, maybe later. We'll see. <laughs> uh, before we move into the matchups, want to thank today's sponsor, Pristine Auction. Pristine Auction, the best sports memorabilia site of all time. This is where I am going on the reg looking for signed autographs. Signed autograph. Signed autograph. Will you sign your autograph on? I have <laughs> look, this autograph of yours. Will you sign it? Look, I got this. I got this signature of Alvin Kamara, and I had Drew Brees sign it. <laughs> <laughs> it's way more valuable now. But you can get—they're called stacked autographs, only available at. I'm sorry. You get super cool stuff. They have jerseys for 
nearly any player you can think of. We're still working on Antonio Gibson, pristine auction. Let's let's make that happen. Uh, but it's like really unique gifts. Christmas time is rapidly approaching. We're already thinking about that in the right household. So check it out, pristine auction. And I think these things are way more affordable than you could possibly think. A Miles Sanders signed Eagles mini helmet for just $84. They've already got stuff from rookie Clyde Edwards Alera, signed NFL football, went for just 70 and 79 bucks the other day. Go there, sign up, completely free account. When you do, use the code BALLERS and you're going to get a $10 credit for your first auction and that, win. And that has, the BALLERS has nothing to do with us as a brand. It's the fact that if you put a couple of these <laughs> things in your media room, you're a people come over and be like, whoa, this is a baller right here. <laughs> so BALLERS, save $10. <laughs> Fantasy Forecast. All right, week two is here. We're getting into the matchups. We covered the Browns and the Bengals on yesterday's show, which is tonight's game. Jarvis Landry is expected to suit up, and we'll see what happens. There are a lot of very fantasy-relevant players uh, on the field tonight, and I think storyline-wise, you're going to see some, you know, if, if Joe Mixon struggles tonight, that's going to be a storyline. If he struggles with, for the first two games to start the year, We'll see what Joe Burrow can do, A.J. Green on the field. It'll be a fun one. All right, first matchup I want to talk about today, the New York Giants. <laughs> Mike has decided to hold up some playing cards in an <laughs> effort to, I guess, be Matt Nagy. That is correct. You didn't even let me get to the at Chicago Bears part. Well, you could have kept going, but I was you, okay. were, you were mystified by my... Yeah, I, I guess I was thrown off a little bit when you pulled out <laughs> cards and threw them around the table. Uh, you're a very good magician, by the way. All those cards have disappeared. Illusionist. They're, they've all disappeared. The Bears are five-and-a-half-point favorites. It's a 42-point over-under, which is not a lot. That means the Giants are only projected to have just over 18 points. Um, Mitch Trubisky had a nice fantasy week in week one. Gets to face the Giants in week two at home. So once again, Trubisky looks interesting as a streaming option if, you, if you're desperate. David Montgomery, Mike, you just talked about him. Mm -hmm. Saquon Barkley. Yeah, you can still play him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, is, uh, it was a, a struggle in week one on the ground for Barkley, but he played Pittsburgh. Um, Allen Robinson, we just talked about him, uh, the storyline around his situation and the contract, but look, he's here. He's our wide receiver four on the week against this secondary. The Giants gave up 44 fantasy points to opposing wide receivers in week one. So that was Deontay Johnson. That was Juju Smith-Schuster, James Washington. Um, so on the on the Bears' side of the ball, I guess the question is, do, do you consider Anthony Miller a flex after a nice week one? Jimmy Grandpa? I think he is, uh, speaking to Anthony Miller, he is someone that you can flex. It's a matter of your options. I don't see him as someone I'm – desperately trying to get into my lineup his game was really recovered at the very end of last week's game he you know through the first three quarters he had pretty much done nothing he wasn't out there as much as you wanted to see in the routes run and the, you know the behind the scenes data wasn't great so to me it's Allen Robinson and David Montgomery as the two clear starters that I would start in just about all situations this week I I do think David Montgomery is a is a really strong start and then Mitch Trubisky and Jimmy Grandpa that could uh, be started in a pinch. After the strong week one for Darius Slayton, much, you know, could be a tough matchup here against Chicago. We don't know whether Golden Tate's going to be back, but if you had to choose between Slayton or Shepard. I mean, you got to stay with the hot hand. Uh, you got to go with Darius Slayton, with, go with the big plays. Shepard Shepherd had an okay game. Uh, Six for 47. Yeah, I mean, seventy-eight percent snap count. A, a lot of a lot of receivers were just chilling in that fifty-yard zone last week. Yeah, but I mean, it, we don't have any more information here to go off of it, except for Darius Slayton was more targets, yards, touchdowns, and snap percentage. So it's it makes the air sense yards. to go with Slayton. He's the, younger. He was a rookie last year with the rookie quarterback. He had enough, you know, actual production his rookie year to say <clears throat> this is a breakout potential player that's how I saw Darius Slayton coming into the season is that if you wanted to take a shot of one of these three guys if you take it on Darius Slayton he has the breakout potential because we just haven't seen him 
you know, is, is, he's coming into his second year as a wide receiver. Based on game one, I'm I'm definitely in on Darius Slayton. I tried to pick him up anywhere he was available. I've tried to trade for him, and I, he would be the start for me. Are you trying to trade for Evan Ingram? Because in week one, 94% snap count, seven targets, only caught two passes for nine yards, but he was on the field. Are you trying to acquire him? I'm still in on Evan Ingram. I don't know that I'm actively trying to trade for him yet with – Depending on your situation, maybe you had... Noah Fant, Evan Ingram, rest of the season. Noah Ooh. Fant. That one... That's tough. I mean, I think I still side with Evan Ingram. Are we including the games Evan Ingram will miss, or are we saying per Stop. game? We are just asking who you'd rather have on your roster. I'd rather have Noah Fant. However, I, I had Evan Ingram in as my start of the week before I replaced him. Uh, I do think this is a very good matchup. He had you know, a ton of the valuable uh, slot, you know, formation lineups for tight end. So I, I think he's a fine start this week. The Atlanta Falcons go to Dallas in the highest over-under of the week. It's up to 53 Woo! on my latest report. All right. Cowboys are four-and-a-half-point favorites. Uh, we saw the fantasy goodness with the Atlanta offense last week. Three wide receivers over 100 yards. Dallas has three wide receivers that are very viable this week, too, and I would start all three of them. I would be willing to play, obviously, Amari Cooper, but then Michael Gallup and CeeDee Lamb. Blake Jarwin's out for the season. Um, so you've got Julio, Ridley, and Gage, Cooper, Gallup, and Lamb. Are you starting all of them in the highest <laughs> over-under of the week? I, I am. I think I am. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been down that road before. Have Six we, wide receivers in one game. Never. Never in the history of the fantasy footballers has there been a game where we've said, yes, Start six different wide receivers. Well, and let's go beyond that because I think you start both quarterbacks, Matt Ryan and oh, Dak yeah. Prescott. If you're starting six wide receivers, I hope the and quarterbacks I, are I think play. you start both running backs, Gurley and Zeke. Yep. I think you start Hayden Hurst after he ran uh, a ton of routes, let all tight ends and routes run in week one. Didn't get the receptions, but doesn't matter yet. I think the only – the cheese stands alone. Dalton Schultz is I'm not st getting started. I'm starting Blake Jarwin. Oh, Mike, you can't do that. If you start Blake Jarwin over da Dalton Schultz, you will end up with at Similar least two <laughs> fewer points. <laughs> well, Dalton Schultz is ruining this parade, man. This Dal Dalton Schultz stands <laughs> alone as the only player you can't play in this game. Well, okay. Tony uh, Pollard. Tom, I'm not Tony gonna, Pollard. Are I'm you not going to start Tony Pollard yet? Over Dalton Schultz, I would. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. If, if this is a flex situation. <laughs> Take that, Dalton. <laughs> I mean, uh, watch Dalton Schultz go out and put up two touchdowns well, in this game which you could but D uh, Dak Prescott likes to target the tight end we'll see if it holds up when so, the talent I think level drops Lamb to Dalton. Is have I, I, I want to know let's say Dalton Schultz has a, a good game or even a good season just really solid mm -hmm. will you be more happy that the role is vindicated in your analysis or sad that you missed it with Blake Jarwin it will absolutely be both of those things and both of those like Dalton Schultz is not going to be a a top fantasy tight end, but he will probably finish the year with with 80 targets or so. It's tough when injuries happen because you don't get to find out if you're right or wrong at all. I mean, you, you just get nothing out of it. You don't get to – all that offseason – yeah. first of all, not a luck dragon. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I, we were told that what? Falcor was supposed to be a luck dragon. Yeah, the, whatever bad, bad luck, luck yeah. dragon. Yeah. I love Michael Keaton. I love him too. <laughs> all right, we're moving on because there's not a lot to break down in that game. Nope. Uh, Detroit, the Lions, they head to Green Bay. They take on the Packers. Uh, Packers are six-point favorites. They looked great in week one. It's a 49-and-a-half point over-under. They did face a Minnesota secondary that's brand new, a Minnesota defensive line that was, I think, last in pressure rate last week. So you get to find out if it's that easy for Green Bay again against Detroit which it might be at home um, because all of Detroit's starting cornerbacks are currently hurt with hamstring injuries. Mm. So let's let's dig deeper on the Green Bay side of the ball. Aaron Rodgers, look, if, if he's on your team and, and he's sitting here against Detroit and he had the great week one, you're playing Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Jones, he's he was drafted to be in your lineup. He's in your lineup. Devontae Adams, the same. Let me throw some Aaron Rodgers questions okay. at you because I feel like pe a lot of people that drafted Rodgers could have gotten him with another player. Yeah, they, they're like, well, I'll just grab another quarterback because Aaron Rodgers could be, like, could sure. be awesome, could be terrible. So let's say 
Aaron Rodgers, you're going to start him against Detroit, or would you start Deshaun Watson against Baltimore? I'll, I'll start Rodgers. Oh, All right. Man, that's a All really right. – I'll that's smash Rodgers. Let's on go. Yeah. Come on, Rodgers. I'm going to start Rodgers. Yeah. All right. That's, that's fine, Jay. Don't feel bad about that. Detroit is not a tough matchup. Well, they're getting their – what was it? The number three pick overall – uh, back. He was a full participant in practice at cornerback. I think that should help their their defense. Aaron Rodgers or the quarterback that he is facing, Matthew Stafford. Now, we saw Kirk Cousins. It was a bit garbagey, but Kirk Cousins and Adam Thielen came through with a Aaron big Aaron Rodgers without any hesitation. Oh, man, I love it. Kenny Galladay is – we don't have a status update on him. Oh, if yeah, he was fair. back in, yeah, yeah. maybe I think about uh, Stafford. But without the, – here's the only thing that can hurt Rodgers in this game is – Detroit can't do anything, and this becomes Aaron Jones's game. That's that would be my concern. Sure. Yeah, I mean Aaron Rodgers is is a top option this week. Outside of the creme de la creme that you know are are going to be great, the, the you know the Pat Mahomes and and uh, Josh Allen, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Dak Prescott in that crazy over under game. I mean, I think I I would start Kyler over him, and okay. then that's kind of the the end of the list that I would start over Aaron Rodgers. Matt Ryan. He's the he's the biggest question to me, and I okay. think I would start Matt Ryan over Aaron Rodgers. Al Borland, resident Green Bay Packers, Homer. How is this discussion about Aaron Rodgers making you feel right now? Great. <laughs> <laughs> I, n I never lost faith. That's probably true yeah. and did not work for you last year. I think we shouldn't be afraid to start Aaron Rodgers – in the right week, in the right matches. This, this is exciting stuff, man. I want Aaron Rodgers to be good. We'll just see if it persists. Stafford is tough. He's a tough play right now if he doesn't have his top option. I yeah. mean, uh, what was it? Quentin Cephas had yeah. 10 yes. targets, which is the first time. Uh, is he undra an undrafted wide receiver got 10 targets in his first game? Something of that nature. But Stafford, look, he only, he only went deep on 7% of attempts in week one. He was going deep 22% of the time last year. Losing Kenny Galladay is a massive blow. Now, you could make an argument that this game he's going to have to keep up. It's a 50-point over-under. Green Bay was lightning in week one, so Stafford's going to have to throw the ball a lot. They can't get by with, with the running game and Adrian Peterson, that's for sure. But it's a tough start for me. You're like back in on Marvin Jones, though, right? Sure, sure. I, I Marvin was targeted – frequently last week it wasn't a great game it's still I think it's going to be hard for Marvin Jones to be the one I mean he needs Galladay to I'd rather have Galladay in the lineup most people were smashing Marvin Jones as a must start and I'm kind of sitting there going well there's a reason Quentin Cephas got 10 targets it's because you can't target Marvin Jones every single play he's not a one all right agree disagree I I agree I do think he's you know going to get enough work that he should be a regular starter but he benefits from Kenny Galladay out there uh, I was going to ask you guys on the the Packers side Lazard or MBS or both would you be willing to flex them out and like Alan Lazard or Mike Williams for instance Ooh, that's a good question Th those two players but the, the the two Packers players are very even to me I would be willing to flex either I don't think you have to flex either but if I needed to put them in order, I would still have Alan Lazard ahead of MVS just due to the snap percentages and routes run. And it looked like Lazard was the two for the team. That being said, the, the skill set of Valdez Scantling is a very fantasy relevant skill set. You're talking 50 yard bomb touchdowns are probably slightly ahead for him than, than L Lazard King. DeAndre Swift. Was definitively the third down back last week. Yes. Um, we, we've all but retired our... Uh, oh. I'm thankful he's young. Second team, carry on. Second team. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no. No, you're not kidding me? No, I... Yes, I am kidding you. <laughs> no, I'm not serious. Okay. Okay. Uh, Adrian Peterson had 17 opportunities in week one. If you had to start one, Peterson or Swift? I would start Peterson. I, I, it's a it's a higher floor, lower ceiling situation. I do think Peterson will get quite a bit of work, and I think the Packers. This is they, they've got a really good secondary right now. 
I think you want to run the ball. I think Adrian Peterson gets close to 20 uh, carries, and so he'll have a fine enough day. And as you know, if I you're around the goal this. line, you're probably putting AP in. I cannot believe we're just, it's back to Adrian Peterson. This is ridiculous. Yeah, how much of this is just our own stubbornness because of you know he's just. It's not just us. I mean, I'm saying just how are you're the Detroit Lions. You just spent a second round pick on DeAndre Swift, and you're like, okay, Adrian Peterson. Freshly cut off the street, uh, get on our team and be the lead back. It's but doesn't it validate? I mean, he had a great week. He averaged six point six yeah, yards per I, carry. I know. Like, like when you say it like that, it sounds like they're making the wrong decision. But it, it it's clearly the right decision. I guess. I think what Mike's saying is, what a world. Yeah. That it was the right decision that Adrian yeah. Peterson off the street is better than the second rounder that you just signed. T.J. Hawkinson. Are you playing him this week? Man, this is like a fool me once situation because of last year's big week one breakout. Um, I, I, I'm a little bit more hesitant, but no, I mean, you, 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 you do have to play him. You drafted him. If, you, if he's on your roster, you played him last week, it was good. You, you hope that this is for real and you play him this week. He, he's on one of my rosters. I will be playing him. But man, will I feel dumb if he just disappears the rest of the season again. Jacksonville taking on the Tennessee Titans this week. Titans heavy favorites, nine point favorites, forty two point over under. They're at home. Jacksonville only has an implied point total of uh, sixteen point eight points this week. That is not a lot. Um, last year we saw Week Three Jacksonville winning the, uh, over Tennessee twenty to seven. That was back in the Mariota days, and then in Week Twelve Tennessee smashed them forty two to twenty. Gardner Minshew had the very efficient, very impressive, very unlikely touchdown percentage to continue if he only throws 20 times. But it was a, a very impressive week one for Gardner Minshew. That didn't translate to a you know a big DJ chart day. But are we optimistic? I mean, this is a very difficult matchup. I'm optimistic for the wide receivers. So, you know, DJ Chark. You're you're playing him as a wide receiver too, but yeah, I'm far more optimistic in him. I would take the over on Jacksonville's points, but that doesn't mean I'm playing Gardner Minshew. I was gonna say I would sit Gardner this week if it were me, Jason. Yeah, yeah, I agree. This isn't a great matchup for him. Um, You know, I I think the Titans' defense are pretty good. I'm I'm not loving the Jaguars. I I don't like this line. I feel like, you know, I I would uh, this would be my almost upset. But I still think it's not great for fantasy. This doesn't project to be a bonanza. I, I think they're going to have success running the ball with Derrick Henry, and that's going to slow things down for the you know for the offense of the Jaguars. Are you going to play James Robinson, undrafted rookie sensation, who came out and uh, look? He didn't put up a big fantasy day, but he was very surprised. He's just an undrafted unfilled. rookie. The sensation part was a lie. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I would be willing to start him. He's in consideration at the flex. I, I hope that because I picked him up off of waivers, I just have a. a you hope st- that he's good because you picked him. No, up. no, no. I, I hope because I picked him up off of waivers that I have a stronger starting lineup uh, where I can wait for a a better plus matchup. But I mean, the dude was he got all the carries. He Benny, was the Benny guy. Benny Snell this week or James Robinson. As of right now, I would start James Robinson. Malcolm Brown. Mm. I think I would go. I'd go Malcolm. James Robinson, Antonio Gibson. I would go Gibson. So apparently, I'm. Yeah, I I I believe in in Gibson this week. All right, Ryan Tannehill. One of the things that we saw in Week One was uh, Tennessee. They ran a lot of plays, and they gave Tannehill the opportunity. I think that was his highest attempts in a game as a Titan. Makes sense. In week one, and at the same time, you still saw Derrick Henry getting the ball a ton, so those two things can coexist. Uh, but the game script probably doesn't favor Tannehill. I still think you could stream him in this matchup. I, I think you can s- play him week in and week out until proven otherwise. I mean, the reality is if you look back to last year, he was the quarterback three when he from the time he took over the job until now, and – he was good just about every single week. He was good week one. I I don't think you bench Tannehill until you have 
a reason to bench him. Uh, he's he's a start every week for me. Any concern with AJ Brown in this one? I assume he's in your lineup. No, you're playing him. I do have a little concern. I mean, the, uh, I'm uh, yes, you're playing him, but I'm keeping an eye on the situation with Corey Davis looking like the first read target. I don't expect that to happen. That's not how I projected the season. But if week two happens and A.J. Brown is clearly second fiddle to Corey Davis, I'll start to worry. Corey, when you look at last year, I was curious about the game log for Corey Davis. He had two weeks where he was – in both weeks, the number nine overall fantasy wide receiver. Five for 91 and a touchdown, six for 80 and a touchdown. They were talking about Corey Davis, and it was simply the the defense was giving Ryan Tannehill an open Corey Davis. So he, the, the assessment was Ryan Tannehill made the right throws for the team. So, I mean, uh, you know, as expected, defenses are uh, keying in on A.J. Brown a bit more. But So this is up to, to Brown to figure it out. you got to – you got to make the jump as a sophomore. This is the defense that you're going to figure it out against. So <laughs> now that you're saying all that and realizing the matchup, I think A.J. Brown will bounce back and have a great game. Well, it was nice to see, I mean, for Corey Davis, truthers out there, the three of you, it was nice to see him on the field over 80% of the time, which is what he needed to get those nice performances last year, and he didn't really do that in the second half of the year. Um, otherwise, LaVista Chenault in desperation play, probably not this week. That's a – pretty desperate deep flex but if he if if lavisca comes through again like with a with a decent target share and makes some splash plays then i will be he will move into that weekly flex he was a first round talent that just wasn't drafted there because of injuries i have been trying and failing to acquire derrick henry in every league under the sun before this week because it's going <laughs> to be unbelievable i think against jacksonville this week i'm gonna say 27 carries, 163 yards, and a touchdown. Okay. Yeah. He might get in the end zone more than that. And five touchdowns. Way to, way to low ball him. <laughs> you didn't let me finish. <laughs> One touchdown per quarter. Yes. Uh, and uh, they're going into overtime, so five. Five, yeah. Minnesota, Minnesota takes on the Indianapolis Colts this week. The Colts are three-point home favorites. It's a 48-and-a-half point over under. Uh, we have a couple of players – in this game that we'll be talking about in the starts of the week. But Minnesota's defense struggled last week. They sit dead last against fantasy opposing fantasy wide receivers after one week. They gave up 68 fantasy points to opposing <laughs> wide receivers in week one. It, it really was amazing because you had MVS with a great game, Lazard with a great game, and then, oh, lo and behold, a dominant – unbelievable game from Devontae Adams. It, there was no guarding anyone. The must starts in this game, Dalvin Cook, Adam Thielen, Jonathan Taylor. Do you look at Naeem Hines from this point forward as a must start? He is a must flex. I, w I don't know if we're going to put him in RB2 categories yet, but he is a, a must flex for me, yeah. And then uh, anybody else from this matchup you look at as a must start? Yeah, I mean – when I look at the wide receiver options for the uh, the Colts, I mean, T.Y. Hilton, Paris Campbell, both of those guys will be in my lineup this week. I think that the what we saw from the Vikings defense, the fact that they had half of their defense as new starters, they're trying to figure out this system, and I believe they will, I believe they will figure it out. It's very similar to what we saw um, with the Kansas City Chiefs when there's a bunch of new weapons and a good coordinator, which Minnesota has, it takes time to learn that system. And so I think Minnesota's defense is going to be one to target right now and will need to pivot later in the season when they start figuring this thing out. But they, they don't have it yet. So I'm starting T.Y. Hilton and Paris Campbell. Mike, are you starting Campbell or are you waiting, waiting and seeing? Nope, I'm, I'm ready to start him. <laughs> All right, Phillip Rivers. Uh, we'll talk about him more later, like I said. Uh, <laughs> Phillip Rivers has a great opportunity. I mean, he was simultaneously great and bad week one which is kind of his thing now but minnesota a plus matchup uh jack doyle do we have a report on whether jack doyle is going to be active in this game because i know uh, he didn't practice on wednesday yeah that's the last i had heard i'll see if i can find some okay jack it, <laughs> and then Look, jonathan taylor it's it's funny jason but you're not fully incorrect on that fully incorrect if mo Ali cox is the only tight end active yeah he uh, you're not gonna start him no no, but I'm going to talk about it. But you will be about excited it. about it. I will. 
And maybe in DFS, try to get a, a super cheap uh, touchdown play. It's rare to get to start a gigantic person. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I Yeah, I mean, it, to this extreme, yeah, there's one. There's Mo Alley Cox. <laughs> it's rare to be able to start a gigantor, for sure. I know. I know. He's, he's enormous. Uh, I'm surprised the football doesn't pop when he catches it. <laughs> yeah, in his – I mean, you talk about <laughs> – Baby hands versus this guy's hands. Yeah, I can't find the football when he's holding it. Yeah, you know, he's it's just, just glove. It's just, it's it's like me holding a marble. A marble, exactly <laughs> right. I just put my whole try to get him to fumble. Ah, oh, he's just the legend the, grows. The legend grows. Yeah, as does the man. Yeah, he he's never stopped. He never stopped growing. Um, Jonathan Taylor. Oh, he's yes. a smash play this week. Oh yeah. Cannot wait to see him in the featured role. Frank Wright coming out and confirming he's their starter here on out. So super excited about that. But like I said, we'll talk a little bit more about this matchup later. The Bills take on the Dolphins. The Bills are five and a half point road favorites. It's a forty one point over under. This are you is, surprised they're not yes, more heavily favored? I, I was shocked when I saw this line. I I I think they're giving respect to the Dolphins secondary as is deserved. You know, uh, they've got two big name uh, guys on, on in in their secondary. With uh, was it they they signed uh, Byron Jones from the Cowboys, and they still have Xavier Howard. Howard. So yeah. it's 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 a decent defense, but at the same time, what the Bills showed Week One was that they are clicking on all cylinders. We talked preseason about how they had the highest rate of returning snaps on both sides of the ball, and they looked like a team that did not miss the preseason, did not miss anything. Uh, they only upgraded their team with Zach Moss and Stephon Diggs. I, you know, I, I fully expect the Bills to smash here. Yeah, this is the opposite of the Rams, or uh, I'm sorry, the, the Cowboy game, Cowboy Falcons. Like, this is, I'll play Diggs, love playing Josh Allen. He's going to have another massive week. I get that we're in Ryan uh, Fitzpatrick, Revenge game narrative. But we always are. Yeah, I mean, with, to be fair, we always kind of are now with Ryan Fitzpatrick. But the running backs from Miami, oh my goodness. Is it the guy, they, the free agent they gave some money to, the player they traded for, or is it the seventh round pick, Miles Gaskin? I, it, I, I, I'm out. I'm playing, I'm playing no Dolphins. Zero. Right. I'm not playing Devontae Parker, regardless of his health. Just take the just take him off your board. He's facing Tredavious White right. if he's healthy with an injury, mm -hmm. right? If he's half healthy, and then I'm not playing Mike Gesicki in this game because I feel like there are enough of these other tight ends. We've been talking about some of them, right? When you're looking at uh, Johnu Smith or Noah Fant or Logan, Dallas Goddard, Logan Thomas, or Logan Thomas, yeah. or you know, yeah, I would play TJ all Hawkinson. Those. I'd play all of those. I would play all those guys over Gesicki. Um, Devontae Parker is is limited, has re-aggravated the hamstring. So if he doesn't play, then White goes on Preston Williams. I, I agree. There's not a single Dolphin I will play in this matchup. And then, you know, you guys talked through the other side of the ball. It, this is just a, a great matchup for Buffalo, which, to be honest, in the NFL, I, it makes me look twice when I see that line and them not favored by more and saying, okay, divisional game, does Miami find a way to make this more competitive? But right now, do you have any hesitation with anybody on the on the Bills side of the yeah, ball? Yeah, uh, just I, John Brown with the injury. That's it. Just John Brown monitor his his status, his health status. Uh, but outside of that, you know, I I don't love Singletary or Moss to be honest. I you know we I love the Bills side uh, in general. I just don't like how much the fantasy relevant things for the running back core are split between the two and the quarterback. So I will hopefully have those two running backs on my bench. 49ers. They go to New York. Uh, they take on the Jets as a sweet salve to their week one defeat. Mm. 49ers are seven-point favorites. It's a 42-point over-under. Goodness gracious. Um, they're dealing with injury. I mean, we know that they're dealing with injury on the defensive side of the ball. They're dealing with injury on the offensive side of the ball with Ayuk and Debo Samuel, and they had to sign Mohamed Sanu, who you will not start for your fantasy roster. They have George Kittle. Not going to practice all week. Think he could still play. So I asked the question, without practice, if there's George Kittle active on your roster, you are doing what? Starting him. That's, that's what my view is too, Mike. Man. 
I am really nervous about it. Uh, it You're nervous that just, he'll get knocked back out? Well, it knocked back out, just be ineffective. Uh, we, What were the numbers? I'm, I can't remember now because George Kittle basically had this happen last year where he had a hyperextended knee, and then there was – I'm remembering there's a time period where George Kittle just was not – the same player. I could I could be remembering this completely incorrectly. When he came back after week eleven, and granted he took time off, right? He, but, and okay, this yeah, wouldn't he be got with, time off. This wouldn't be with the time off. But when he came back in week twelve against the Green Bay Packers, it appears he was the tight end one. One. Why well, and the game he got injured? You're thinking about was the Arizona game, Mike? Yeah. He ended up number four in that game when he came back in. Okay. So it, I I look. He's a. <laughs> I uh, just don't think that you want to miss. I don't. I don't want to. Ha- I don't want to be the guy that started. All right, uh, Hawkins, Mike Gesicki, yeah. and then watch George Kittle score twice on against New York on my bench. Yeah, if he's active, I'm playing him. But I, I will have an option to start. It he came I back and played an last week with the injury, right? Yeah, and did nothing. I I realize that. I'm just saying he was back out on the field running around. I can't help but think he'll be out there this week, and they'll just let him rest. Question, answer. George Kittle is out. He's inactive. I know where this is going. Jordan Reed. Yeah, baby. <laughs> will be playing that role who where he has succeeded in the past for this head coach where there is, you know, all the wide receivers are injured. I don't think so. I don't yeah. think I'm willing to do it. I'm not either. He was barely out on the field last week. I thought he would actually be out there more. George Kittle went down. He was on and off. 16% snap count for Jordan Reed. I got to see it first. Oh, I think I would do it. Oh, oh I think I would do it. Is your skin crawling? <laughs> I, I, oh, man. Yeah, but, no, I, oh. But they they do have, most of is there. There is at least some familiarity. Familiarity, <laughs> goodness. I'm, I will not be attempting R- that word anymore. Ridiculously, <laughs> uh, like he knows the Shanahan system. They they are expecting Brandon Ayuk to make his debut, and they're. I mean, they just spread the ball out so much last week. I I would not be going all in on Jordan Reed as much as my heart hopes to see that happen. Yeah, I think I, I mean Raheem Mostert is a must start. Yes. Uh, otherwise, I'm not sure. I'm really. I mean Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo would be somebody that I'm willing to to play in this game and and see if they find a way through. Giving up, you know, 28 fantasy points last week the Jets did, and, and a ton to the wide receiver. Oh, Frank Gore revenge game. 37 <laughs> year old Frank Gore. <laughs> Gore. That's that's a lot of spite that this man may have been holding. Years and years, <laughs> decades of spite are. <laughs> Pint up in this man. No, I, I think Jimmy Garoppolo could have a really good game. I almost made him my, my streamer this week. I do worry that, you know, if Mostert's, you know, look at last week, right? Mostert had a great game. Jimmy Garoppolo had a great game. That was because it was a receiving touchdown. If that was – the ball was handed off to him and he takes 80 yards to the house, all of a sudden – That's my George Kittle concern is what is this Jets offense going to do even against a banged-up San Francisco defense to make this game anything close? Nothing. Yeah. So they don't have the weapons to compete. Yeah, your your best wide receiver, Jamison Crowder, has a hamstring injury and it's not practicing. I would play Chris Herndon over Jordan Reed. Chris yeah. Herndon is starting. I played Chris Herndon over Gesicki this week. I okay. I agree with both of those. That, that that's fair. I mean, what he about? may have he may lead the league in targets at the tight end position this week if Jamison Crowder actually missed the game due to hamstring. That injury. is a fair take. Yeah, sneaky. Uh, but no, Mr. Gorbelage, not in your lineup. <laughs> Jamison Crowder troubling if Oof. he's hurt but i guess if he's active you're playing him right yeah hopefully not man there's a lot of hesitation when we talk about the jets you yeah. can't have you can't have any conviction with that team no you no cannot. you could take a dfs shot on brashad perryman that's it yeah high, pr- high praise <laughs> yeah that, i mean that's <laughs> this that was my praise end praise praise over anything else from this game you want to discuss negative all right, the Los Angeles Rams take on the Philadelphia Eagles. This will be a fun one. The Eagles should get back Lane Johnson, Miles Sanders. The Rams are one-point road favorites in this one, a 45-and-a-half point over under. Carson Wentz, I'm sorry I will not tweet about you at all during this game. I don't know if, if it's going bad for him. Do I then tweet about him playing badly so yes, he plays well? Or, absolutely. Or reverse? Say no, say no one in the NFL is playing worse than Carson Wentz right, right, right now. now. And then, boom, he's back. See, there you go. 
Reverse Reaper. I don't know if getting Lane Johnson <laughs> back is going to be enough, though, against Aaron Donald and this defensive, uh, the pressure that the Rams are going to bring. I don't feel great about Carson Wentz this week. How do you guys feel? I Similar. We have him at 14. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think he could come out and still have a good game. The fact that they didn't have a running game along with not having an offensive line really allowed the Washington football team to just – pin their ears back and go to town on, uh, you know, just Sackville. Eight sacks last week. I, I don't think that happens this week. I think Deshaun Jackson, like they said, they're going to get him you're more and more involved. More, more than eight? Is that what you're saying <laughs> no. is going to happen? No, I don't think they're going to sack him eight times. Um, so, I, But at the same time, there's just there's better options out there. Uh, you know, Ryan Tannehill, for instance, he's – uh, more widely available than Carson Wentz is, and I would I would much prefer to play him. Stafford. I would probably – Without would, Kenny Galladay. Without Kenny Galladay, I would lean Carson Wentz. I think I would too. I hope Kenny Galladay – do we have anything, Brooks, Did on not Kenny practice. Galladay? Did not, again today? Come on, Mike. Can you report that differently, please? Kenny Galladay didn't practice. Oh, oh I like You that. actually <laughs> tricked me into thinking he kind of practiced. No, that was good, but he didn't. <laughs> Oh really? Yeah, no. Today he didn't practice. Really? Yeah. No, that's no, that's great. Kenny Galladay is resting today. Okay. Oh, okay. No, that's nice. Okay. Thank you, Brooks. There you go. That's not now that he's it, taking a nappy nap. Do we not expect him this week? Here's the truth: if he plays, I will be hesitant to play him the same way I was hesitant to play Mike Evans this past week the first week coming back off of the hamstring is not a great matchup are there returns or exchanges for first round kenny galladay <laughs> picks in our league of record there, there Could are i trades, do a little yeah. swap ski for i mean i passed on amari cooper to take galladay right there mm. i did you just, can offer the trade see I, if the other look, the amari cooper uh, uh manager, manager loves the idea of i just kenny i just grabbed your taking it to 100 player i can trade you scotty miller now see that seems like a little bit of a low ball offer mike well, one of them is playing and practicing. I'm in. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> He's not practicing. All right. The uh, Back to the uh. Eagles game. Jared Goff, uh, he was a streaming candidate for one of you two yesterday, was he not? Yes. Or was, on Tuesday? It was my stream of the week. I, I stand by it? I stand by it. I think that this is a really good offense that last week, week one, w was predicated on the run, and this week will not be able to so easily run against the Eagles. In which case, I think it'll be a little bit more Cooper Cup. Robert Woods will always get what he gets, which is just a ton of targets and yards and receptions and no touchdowns. Um, and who, who who did you say would do that? Robert Woods. Oh, okay. Because that's just who he is, and I love him for it. Uh, I wish he could get the touchdowns, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Uh, I do think Tyler Higby uh, can have a good game here. We've got a banged up Everett, and again, I think that the passing game will be more relevant this week than it was week one. Are you just putting Higby right back in your lineup then, Mike? I am. You're, you're not worried? I agree with Jason's assessment. Okay. And then, uh, I mean, there's a lot of fantasy storylines in this game. Malcolm Brown had the big week one. There was an interesting quote, maybe a little Cam Akers hope quote here. Uh, Sean McVay said, I think Malcolm got a little bit more work just based on the flow of the game than what we had anticipated. So maybe the game plan wasn't as heavily Malcolm yeah. Brown focused. No, but it's it's hot hand. I mean, the the, the game flow was Malcolm Brown was picking up yards and Cam, Ak Cam Akers was slowing the offense down. Now, that was week one. That could switch, but yeah, I, Malcolm Brown is a fine low-end RB2 play this week. Even uh, the matchup stinks. But the Rams are going to score points, giving Malcolm Brown possible some of those uh, delicious goal line touches. All right. Uh, Miles Sanders, he's in your lineup. Yep. You'd, uh, yeah, you're playing him. D-Jax or Jalen Rager if you had to start one? Ooh, Ooh that's a good question. I, I would still rely on the vet. Um, I, I Seven would go, targets, just two catches in week one. Exactly. The, the targets were there. They've talked about having – you know, more snaps for him available, I, I would go D-Jax. Do you play Philadelphia's number one tight end, or do you play Zach Ertz? Oh. That's a great question. I would play both. <laughs> and honestly – That's the real answer. That is the answer. I mean, if you have either one of those players, they should be in your lineup. Unless unless you, you know, you have Travis Kelsey and you just want to scoop up – Is that just you up. weighing in, Brooks, that you would play Goddard? No, it's just – 
remind you, we didn't say his name out loud. We said they're number one. Because team. everyone knows who the number one tight end right. for Philadelphia is. Of course, is. it's Dallas Goddard. Okay. okay. Um, but, yeah, I mean, unless unless you're like the Travis Kelsey uh, manager that, that scooped up Dallas Goddard because you just thought he was a good value. Right. I'm playing Dallas Goddard. He's just been outstanding for a long time. And, and keep in mind, when he was drafted, like he was I, – I remember Second he was Mike pick. and I's, but I think he might have been all of ours, number one tight end going into that draft class because mm -hmm. he looked so great for fantasy and we were devastated when he we went to the Eagles. But he has the skill set. He was drafted because of it. Let, so, let me ask you some questions, though, about Dallas Goddard. One, would you go acquire him because you're – if you get him ahead of the full-on breakout, if you believe that this is the year for it, you're going to pay a lot less in a trade than you would midseason. So do you go try to get him? Are you calling for that? No, because I think that a, a breakout at tight end is someone that moves officially into that top three or four, you know, the, the, the Mark Andrews last season. I don't think Goddard can do that while he splits, but I definitely think he's a top 10 tight end the rest of the way. I don't trade for a Higby or Goddard in guy. this game. Because you have Higby as your start of the week. Goddard had the big week one. I'm on the Goddard side of this one. I have them back-to-back -back in my rankings. I guess I'll go with my start of the week, who is one spot ahead right now. Higby. I would play Higby. I feel like maybe. Sure. Maybe sure. it's time. Sure. Two you know, Jason's out. Yeah, no, I'm yeah, out. put me in. Put me in. He's your start of the week. You cannot be out. I, I love Dallas Goddard. That's I mean, wh who do you take? Your start of the week or Travis Kelsey? I'm not, I'm out. Just being the start of the week. You did make just it. predict Tyler Higby. I literally out. said they are back to back in my rankings. Okay, so you're out. You're afraid. I'm not taking a bet on one spot higher in my rankings. Okay, Mike's Jason's in. afraid. Mike's in. Water bet. Uh, also, I like that Jason's flabbergasted that I would ask him to stand behind the start of the week over Tyler Scott. Also, based on this conversation and, and the guff that I'm getting, mm -hmm. we need to make sure we film last week's water bet today. Can we can we make sure that happens? I like how because of the guff, he's not willing to go in on the bet. I think you're getting a, a water cup in the face today. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I just, I'm legit. I, I'm fine with you not doing it. I'm surprised you're surprised I would ask you to when you made the call two seconds ago. But let's do some starts. Starts of the week. I'm very excited to see Jason on the fly switch from Tyler Higby to Dallas Goddard as his tight end start of the week. He has a chance to do it right now. Yeah, I, we'll I give could. you some time. Well, wait, tight ends are last. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, that would be that would be funny. <laughs> All right, uh, Jason, why don't you kick it off at the quarterback position? Sure, I'm going with the Stallion, mm. Josh Stallion. Excellent. He is. Uh, look, he he's been dominating. He showed that he can break out. He did it with his arm as well as his legs last week. But this week is all going to be about the rushing. He ran for 57 yards last week. If you look at the Dolphins' defense that does have a good secondary and you have a slightly banged up John Brown, I don't think that he's going to necessarily throw for 300 yards and two you know, passing touchdowns. Look at what Cam Newton did week one. Two rushing touchdowns against the Dolphins. And if you look in four career games versus Miami – Josh Allen is averaging 79 and a half yards on the ground with two and a half passing touchdowns. So I, I, I think he's a smash play. Can't imagine not starting Josh Stallion this week against Miami. And every week, I think, here on out until he proves otherwise. The schedule certainly gets rough in, after a couple of weeks, but hopefully by that time he has solidified himself as a matchup-proof quarterback. All right, I'm going with Cam Newton. Look, he's rooting tootin' and he is back to booty scootin'. Cam Newton. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Two rushing touchdowns. Uh, should have had a passing touchdown. If Nikhil Harry doesn't uh, just give that ball away and actually scores the touchdown, Cam Newton would have either been the quarterback two or the quarterback one on the week. Look at the roster. Like This is going to be the game plan. It's going to be... Cam Newton throwing with lower volume and then running as much as he possibly can. Seattle secondary gave up three 100-yard receivers last week. There you go. So, this is this is the one, like you said. I'm going. I'm going with P. River. <laughs> I'm taking Philip Rivers as my start of the week against Minnesota. Oh, make it rain. Uh, I explained this to Jason in the studio yesterday. Look, dump offs. They still count for the quarterback, and they now do. they get to go to an explosive Jonathan Taylor. 
And uh, he still threw the ball 46 times last week for 363 yards. He faces the worst passing defense, at least after week one. And uh, I think P. River gets it done. Let's go running backs, Jason. Running backs, Jonathan Taylor against Minnesota's hapless Ooh, defense combo. is going to destroy. I think he can take some of those dump-offs to the house. This is the last week that we're going to be able to ever make him a start of the week because from this point on forward, he's pretty much going to be a top 10 locked and loaded back. We haven't seen it yet. Last week, he, he got a ton of work and wasn't the super upper echelon. He will be this week. I, I think he's a... A must start, and I would start him over all your great right. players. David Johnson had a great week one. If I had to decide between those two guys, I'm going Jonathan Taylor. As would I, and a guy who was lower in the rankings, so I want to give the old confidence, the old pat on the fantasy butt. Ronald Jones, starting running back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He gets to play Carolina. You're going to hear the fantasy footballers talking a lot about fantasy running backs playing against Carolina. Jones. I was mad. You got in here. You put your start of the weekend first. He I, was going to be mine. Yeah. I had I had three starts of the weekend. Peel back the curtain a little bit. It was Ronald Jones. It was Raheem Mostert and David Montgomery. Those were my first three choices, but you guys already had all three, including the take it to 100. He was clearly the best running back on the team. I'm, uh, I'm pretty confident that Tampa Bay is going to be ahead in this game. Uh, I like what I saw from the Panthers on offense last week, but... Tampa Bay gets it right. Ronald Jones gets fed, puts up a decent fantasy game. Jason mentioned it. I'm going Raheem Mostert. I'm going to run it back with him after the nice week one. Uh, I'm going to start him with confidence against the New York Jets. The game script lends itself to plenty of Raheem Mostert. And despite the Jets being pretty good on the against uh, the run last week, I don't think they're going to be able to slow down the 49ers uh, trying to get back in the win column. So I'm going Mostert at running back. Let's go wide receiver. Uh, look, Michael Thomas is out. I think Emmanuel Sanders is going like to be it. a great play. I, I, I believe he gets ten targets. Like I'll be surprised if he doesn't end up with ten targets. And he's a great wide receiver. Uh, he's someone that should be started this week. I, I would confidently play him. Now, d to be fair to the news, Michael Thomas is. I don't believe he is ruled out yet. And I think they're Michael Thomas is still kind of trying to convince the team that he can play. If Michael Thomas is actually a, if he's a surprise active, are you still that confident in Manny Sanders? Well, I'm not that confident, but I do believe he will be good. He got a touchdown last week with, with you know with Michael Thomas on the field, and obviously Michael Thomas is going to be hampered by this. We saw that with Saquon, we saw that with Kamara, we saw that with Christian Kirk last year. This injury is not one that even if you could play through, you're not the same player. So he's going to need to look to Emmanuel Sanders. He certainly wouldn't be as high, but uh, I think you could start him either way. All right, and my start of the week, it's Hollywood Brown, a 24% target share. This is what we want. If Marquise Brown is going to see 25% of the targets for Baltimore, he is going to absolutely just continue to smash week after week after week. Five receptions, over 100 yards in, in for the second-year player. Should see Bradley Roby uh, in Houston, and that's not a matchup I am scared of for uh, Marquise Hollywood Brown. I like him a lot this week. All right, I'm going to do the very rare, put it all on the line, embarrass myself if it goes south, double start of the week at wide receiver. I'm taking A.J. Green and Odell Beckham Jr. Tonight? Tonight, the double start of the week on Thursday Night Football. I think they're both going to have big weeks. Um, Cleveland just gave up 214 yards to Baltimore wide receivers on just 13 passes and a half. I think there's an opportunity here for A.J. Green. And Beckham was targeted 10 times, drew a couple pass interference penalties on a couple other targets that don't show up on the box score. And, um, you know, the Cincinnati defense was not stretched in week one. Tyrod just completed 16 passes. So we didn't see a whole lot. I think both of them tonight either embarrass me or make me look good. So probably together. All right, at tight end, I'm going with Dallas Higby. Yeah. Because I think, that, <laughs> I think in this game that these tight ends are both start worthy. The reality is I I wanted to go I, – I did have Dallas Goddard in and Evan Ingram in. I replaced both of them with Higby because I realized after week one there are a lot of people who drafted him high and there was so much talk out of my mouth and Andy's mouth about how Higby was – a mirage at the end of last season, but this matchup is great for tight ends. Everett is a little hurt, and I do think the passing game wins. So I would start either one of these guys. Again, I would start uh, Higby over Dallas Goddard by the slimmest of margins. And Mike once again took 
the player that most definitely belongs in this category. Yes, uh, Jared Cook, also known as Jared Cook. Jared Cook. Jared. Also known as Jared <laughs> Cook. Look, if you just mangle his name, yes. he's known by all of those things. Uh, it's a plus matchup against the Las Vegas Raiders. Hobbled to slash no Michael Thomas on the field. Last year, Jared Cook only had five or more receptions twice. He already did it in week one. We saw the volume shift his way. My concern, I, I didn't want Jared Cook in, uh, in any of my drafts because of the volume. If the volume is there for Jared Cook, that is a very different situation where he will be great for fantasy. I'm going to go with Hunter Henry this week against Kansas City. Oh, didn't you go Hunter last week? I did. I'm running it back. It's, it was very solid pick. in week one, five for 73. The game script uh, – they're going to be playing catch up in this one. Plenty of garbage time, and we saw Houston. They actually had some success with Darren Fells and Jordan Aikens last week against Kansas City. Hunter Henry's more talented than those players, and he demands more of a target share. So, I think you can play Hunter Henry with confidence once again. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. In week two, I don't want to be no hater, so I'm going to go with the Lions' Matt Prater. How did Will Lutz do last week? I'm sure he did phenomenal. Okay. Yeah, that's as, as much as I'm following up on I don't play with well. kickers in my leagues, so uh, you Foot tell me. Foot Clan game day alerts can be found at jointhefoot.com. The game day alerts are part of the perks that you get with being a supporter of the show at jointhefoot.com. And a reminder, Mike will be live, 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 live on Sunday morning on all of our uh, various social media accounts, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Boombox, whatever else exists yes. out there. Jason, follow up on the kicker segment. I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. How much of the research for that segment is just making sure that kicker is still actually on the team? Not much, because I th I think where I'm starting with is a knowledge of that. Most of my research is due to uh, RhymeDictionary.com. <laughs> <laughs> so that really is what makes my decision. You used a dictionary and you went with hater. Well, this one was easy. <laughs> <laughs> See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.